This year is expected to see African GDP return to pre-COVID levels, projected at 3.7%. That is the second highest rate in the world after Asia. But to keep making the most of its uniquely important place in the global push for more sustainable development, ESG considerations, those of the environment, sustainability and governance, have to play a bigger part in investment on the continent. So for more on how to balance African opportunity with investment needs, I'm joined by the Deputy Director of the OECD's Development Centre. Federica, thanks so much for, for coming in to speak to me. Pleasure to see you, Georgia. Um, now, first of all, so when we're talking about sustainable investment, what does it look like within the African context? What are we talking about here? Well, sustainable investment is investment that makes benefits in terms of economy, society and environment. So it's an investment that in the African case would contribute to reduce vulnerability, for example, by diversifying the economic structure of Africa. Second, it's an investment that would create jobs, quality jobs, notably for the 29 million youth that enter the 16 years of age every year. And thirdly, it's an investment that does not harm the environment, but on the other hand, contributes to climate resilience and to the energy security of Africa. So this is what we define sustainable investment. You can define unsustainable investment, but basically looking at investment that does not create jobs, does not pay taxes and harm the environment. Mm -hmm. And so in your latest report, there's a call for more of this sustainable investment. But who are you directing your findings towards? Are you trying to get... Um, governments to do more or are you trying to encourage more investors to look towards the continent? Well, as someone would say, it takes two to tango. Mm. So you need to talk to the government because a lot of the resources that are necessary to create these jobs and to respond to climate change will need to come from public investment. Mm. At the same time, government is responsible for regulation and policies that would determine the willingness of investors to go into a country. On the other hand, you also need to engage with investors, on one hand, to convince them that there are opportunities there and that sometimes the risk perceptions about Africa are misplaced. And on the other hand, also to convince them that their investment should be aligned with the sustainability objectives that we mentioned before. So the report that we released today, which is jointly produced with the African Union Commission, is called Africa's Development Dynamics, provides you with figures. So the magnitude of how much we need, but also with data and examples about how you can make it on the side of the government and on the side of the private sector. And those data, data and examples, do they outline exactly how to get to this, this goal of more sustainable investment? Well, you, when it comes to how you make it happen, uh, this is something that my daughter Anna will always ask me, you know, you produce a lot of analysis, but concretely, how do you make these things happen? And first of all, you need to have a grasp of the magnitude of the needs. And we are estimating that there are about $200 billion per year that are necessary in Africa to achieve the SDGs. Second, you need to see where are the possible sources to finance this. Public sector, you need to increase and improve taxation. Today, African countries only collect 16% of the GDP in terms of taxation. For the OECD, it's 32%. Thirdly, you need to help investors to make the right choices. And this is about opportunities. Africa is a fast-growing economy. It's a demography which is exploding. The average age, sorry, not the average age, half of the population is below 19 years of age. And the market is integrating. So why are investors not investing there? They perceive too high risks. They don't realize the opportunities are there. So concretely, what can we do? First, we should work to improve the information available. Second, we should look at the tools that can help investors reduce certain risks, for example, exchange rate risks. And thirdly, we need to strengthen African-owned financial institutions so that they can better direct resources toward the investment needs. In many cases, African governments provide tax incentives and tax breaks that are absolutely useless. Mm. They could use those resources to direct uh, investment towards sustainability. Thanks so much for talking us through all that. Uh, Federica Bonelli, the uh, Deputy Director of the OECD's Development Centre.